Hello and welcome to special edition. We will continue to talk about Armenia Azerbaijan Nagorno Karabakh conflict. And now in my studio, I have our guest, Elnur Aliyev, head of Nizami Ganjavi International Center. Mr. Aliyev, hello and welcome to our special edition. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. I would like to start our discussion with a speech of the President of Azerbaijan Republic, Mr. Hamaliyev. Uh, today he announced the news about the liberation of some new uh, several settlements. It's a great news for all Azerbaijani people. We are very glad to see the victory of our army. And uh, overall, what are your expressions about the current situation? We see that the Armenian uh, government is feeling the panic, they are trying to run away, they are talking about peace negotiations, the importance of peace talks and etc. We feel that they are going back. How do you overall understand this? what's, what's coming? Uh, I think that uh, what's happening now is the result of the negligence of by the international community and impunity that the Republic of Armenia has been uh, accorded for the last 27 years. Uh, I think that the impunity created a monster, uh, which is the Republic of Armenia from our perspective, but this monster is on very weak legs. And Azerbaijan has repeatedly was uh, sending a messages that, uh, you know, we were trying to solve the issue in a peaceful way, but we are not saying that this is the only way we can solve it. And Azerbaijan was building up its military power, its military capabilities. And uh, what was happening since September 27, has been showing that Azerbaijan was very much serious about this. And uh, what was happening also since September 27, uh, I think that the, the international community realized that the uh, power still counts. And Azerbaijan has realized that if you want to enforce international law of I or if you want to enforce a peace, then you have to take responsibility and you have to be ready military. Unfortunately, this is the case now international relationship that they still force matters still power matters and this is what azerbaijan has demonstrated successfully that to protect your rights you have to be uh, powerful you have to be strong and th this is the only way you can uh, let the international community recognize your own rights and uh, when you coming uh, speaking about the statement by the president i think it was very much consistent with the last 27 years uh, because the position is that we want azerbaijani lands back we are not interested nothing more we are not interested in the war. We are not fighting any specific ethnicity or population. We just want our territory back as in line with the UN recognized borders. I, th I think that the most important part of the statement is that uh, we are not pro-war country. We are not uh, tar targeting any civilians. We are not targeting any ethnicities. And we are always giving a chance and we prefer peaceful settlement. But definitely this peaceful, set peaceful solution shall be bilateral unlike what was happening last 27 years, when uh, despite different attempts and the efforts by the Azerbaijani government, there was no serious even approach by the Armenian Republic. And th I think that what was happening last almost two weeks, uh, it's a very important part of the peace enforcement. Now Armenians realize that uh, the world is not the same as they might imagine. And the methodology and the legends it does not help, do not help. So you have to you have to understand the responsibility. You cannot occupy lands of other territory and they feel that this is okay and they feel that you can convince international community, uh, let alone Azerbaijan, to accept this occupation as a fait accompli. I think this is a very important lesson. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I think for the region and for those which uh, victims that uh, civilian victims in Azerbaijan uh, that have lost their lives and unfortunately for our soldiers who are fighting for their land. But this is the only way that we could give a lesson to the Armenian government and push them back to the negotiation table. And I, that's, that's what's happening at the moment, I think, in Moscow. And as the president of Azerbaijan Republic, Mr. Hamaliev also mentioned where actually those statements, those loud statements which were saying by the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, like uh, Karabakh is Armenian, etc. We saw that in the last several days there was a big 
let's say, um, panic among the population, even among the uh, governor officials. They were saying that we really want a peace, as I said previously, and etc. And Azerbaijan is saying that we are ready for peace and negotiations, but the conditions should be our. We have to see the schedule of the, how Armenia is planning to liberate the occupied lands, and etc. And actually, uh, it can be considered what happened last uh, 10 days as a very good lesson for the Armenian government that their provocations will not be left without any reaction as they were thinking about. And the international community is not going to support the occupational state as they were expecting because immediately when the conflict escalated, they started to call for any kind of support from the other different countries, international organizations and etc. But the full international community understand that the right is on the side of Azerbaijan because we react in the frame of the four resolutions of the United Nations Security Council, which required immediate and unconditional withdrawal of the occupational troops of Armenia from Azerbaijani territory. So do you think that Armenia finally understand the mistake made by them and they can get a good lesson from what was happening the last days? Uh, as I said, that uh, unfortunately, when you, when you talk about the international community, I think that the international community is still silent, very much silent on international law. Uh, Azerbaijan is uh, fully compliant with international law. Azerbaijan is fully compliant with the UN principles, uh, which claims that, which demands respect to territorial integrity and sovereignty of the, each and individual uh, UN member state. And definitely what you have mentioned for, for UN Security Council resolutions are very critical in our case because this specifically defines that territories are occupied. But even without those four Security Council resolutions, both Armenia, Republic of Armenia and Republic of Azerbaijan are members of the UN. So when you are becoming a member of UN, you are becoming a member of UN with specifically designated borders. And as a member of the UN, any UN member country has a right to retaliate in case of occupation of its lands. So this is stance, this is, even goes without having the four Security Council resolutions. But plus four Security Council resolutions definitely enforce Azerbaijan's position. But unfortunately, what we have seen since again uh, September 27, that in the international arena, the, what we called international diplomacy, sometimes is confused with international hypocrisy. Uh, because international diplomacy shall be based on international law. You know, there is a question today I read in some news where the people are asking what should go first, diplomacy or the military actions? Uh, definitely what we have been trying as the Azerbaijani Republic, we were putting diplomacy first over the last 27 years. Uh, despite all signs uh, from Armenian side uh, showing they are not serious on the negotiation table, we were giving each and every chance basically to Armenian people, the different even uh, leadership uh, coming from the Republic of Armenia, hoping that uh, at some point they will realize that this is not the way you can establish a good relationship with the, your neighbor. And this, is, this, is, this type of uh, approach will not last for long because otherwise, you know, we, we are both are doomed to live in this region. So to be a good neighbor, you have to have a good relationship. This is very, very important. Now, this is, I think, that the main Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan's main idea over the last 27 years. We were trying a solution that will give us lasting peace and lasting good, neighbor, good neighborhood as a concept. But I think that we have exhausted all our efforts over the last 27 years. Uh, and when it coming back, you know, uh, as, as Azerbaijan, I was very much surprised by, for example, but when I was referring to international hypocrisy, I was very much surprised by the position of the uh, President Macron, for example. Uh, President Macron represents a country which is the co-chair in the UN Security Council, uh, uh, permanent, permanent, permanent member of the UN Security Council. And co-chair of, and the co -chair of the OSC Minsk Group. At the same time, this is the country who suffered from the Nazi Germany uh, for a long, uh, maybe the, the one which suffered the most in Europe. And uh, if you remember, Azer we Azerbaijanis fought for it, freedom and independence of the France at that time. So I think from taking that background, his position basically contradicts his country's role as a permanent member of the UN Security Council, as the uh, co-chair, uh, as uh, the role of the co-chair in OAC Minsk Group, mm -hmm. and more than that, this denies the fact that, that this country was fighting the uh, fascism uh, in the uh, Second World War because same type of fascism we're facing from Armenian side. Because if you look at the uh, history of the Europe 
over the last 100 years. There are only just two countries or two ideologies who were claiming the exclusivity, which, were, which is the fascism ideology. And unfortunately, Armenians are also claiming for ex exclusivity. That's why they have perpetrated the ethnic cleansing, which was approved by the, and confirmed by the Parliament Assembly of the Council of Europe. And on that background, when you see uh, President Macron supporting the Armenian side, then you understand that, that it's not a diplomacy, it's a hypocrisy. But this is very funny because France is a member of the United Nations organizations and also the member of UN Security Council. In overall saying, this is the institutions which uh, voted in support of four resolutions of the UN Security Council which ask for withdrawal of all occupational troops, as I said before, of Armenia from Azerbaijani territories. So this uh, country voted in support of these resolutions and now they're saying that they, let's say, support the people of Nagorno-Karabakh and etc. It looks funny from one side and actually um, this is something which happened because of a uh, very hard work of Armenian lobby working quite actively, but they in, but doing this, they are bringing only instability in the Roman country and in, to France. No, no I, I fully agree. As I said, I think Macron, uh, President Macron contradicts his, country, his country's position in the UN Security Council, because the country which uh, UN Security Council resolution does not have expired date. Once it's adopted for all, until it's implemented. And the issue with the UN, four UN Security Council resolutions, they were not implemented. That was the only issue. So we were lacking enforcement. And when Azerbaijan finally to dis decided to enforce the resolution itself, then we see from the same member of the permanent member specifically of the UN Security Council, such a reaction is very strange. Uh, but uh, th I think that the, the ultimate feeling of Azerbaijan is, th is that, that there is no international justice. So if you want to bring a justice, you have to bring it by your own. This is what's happening at the moment. Indeed, and just recently we saw the statement of the non-aligned movement where they are blaming Armenia for this um, policy which um, resulted in the escalation of the conflict and which can affect the stability in the South Caucasus region. And if we see what's happening now within the last days, some days we saw as Armenian military forces continue to shell the civilian settlements on the territory of Azerbaijan. It continues even today, Tarta, Barda, and even they started to attack the Mingachi region again, finally, and lucky our also equipment were able to ban that, but still it was an attempt to attack the civilians, which contradicts all of their official position when they are talking about the peace resolutions of the conflict and etc. So by doing this, in my opinion, for example, they are putting themselves in a very uh, bad position in front of the international community and the institutions where they actually have the membership and participation. They demonstrate themselves as a very terroristic regime and their behavior contradicts all the uh, international conventions, Geneva Convention, firstly. Well, definitely, the uh, Republic of Armenia contradicts international law. But I think what's happening now that they are shelling the cities and the villages and the regions outside of the Karabakh and other occupied regions, I think this is just natural continuation of the, the, of the policy itself. I mean, if the, if the country in Europe, which is the, uh, in the Republic of Armenia, is a member of Council of Europe, and it is accused of ethnic cleansing in the, in the late 20th century, which perpetrated in, in, in the 90s, early 90s, and this, as I said, it, this confirmed by the Parliamentary Assembly. Do you have any other country which is accused of the ethnic cleansing? So I, I think they're just following the same, uh, same policy and unfortunately, uh, as I said, impunity. You know, they feel impunity. I mean, the impunity which is granted to them by international community are pushing them further in their blatant attacks. That's why they're shelling Ganja, for example, which is outside of the, completely far away from the occupied territory. So why, what's the point of shelling Ganja, which is the second biggest city? And they you're openly think about this. They they're confessing, and they're confessing, and would we, in fact, we don't see the proper reaction from the international community. Mm -hmm. We don't see reaction from, from Mr. Macron, because they are confessing that they were, sorry. And the other day I was watching the TV, the advisor to the prime minister, he confessed that this is a terrorist state, because they said, we are targeting civilians, to achieve a chaos, you know, to spread a chaos ag against the population. This is definition of terrorism. They even do not hide this information. But this is this is definition of terrorism. So what is the, where is the reaction? But it's also very interesting because some days ago they tried to uh, attack Bakut Belisi Jehan pipeline and actually by attacking this pipeline it means that they attack the energy security system of the European Union. 
because this pipeline connects uh, not only Azerbaijan, Georgia and Turkey, but also it's a part of the big project which may bring the gas from the Caspian region to the European Union. So they openly uh, attack the Southern Gas Corridor. That means that they really want to destabilize the sec energy security system also of the European Union. And still we are very let's say surprise seeing that there is no uh, concrete statement from the European leaders blaming Armenia for this behavior. Uh, I think that the, you are mentioned it perfectly in the right way that there is a huge Armenian diaspora which has been there for 100 years specifically in the Western countries in Europe in America and unfortunately have uh, uh, in, significant influence on the politicians and sometimes on the uh, specifically on the media on, on the newspapers, on the TV channels, and we see it. We see that there is definitely uh, openly applied double standards. As you said, you know, when there is any issue with any pipeline anywhere in the world, in the normal place, there will be immediate reaction. Of course. But we see that, as I said, they are shelling civilians, no reaction. They are shelling the uh, pipelines, no reaction. Uh, I think that the, if you root, the root of the issue is that as a republic, I think the, the, the methodology that they're applying and ideology that they have, this is the ideology of terrorism. If you look how the terrorists are uh, becoming a heroes in, in, in Armenia, they're getting monuments, they're, getting, they're naming the streets after, their, uh, after the name of terrorists. Uh, for example, the Nijde. The, the Daragin Nijde. Daragin Nijde, who was fighting, with, who was fighting along with the Hitler. And he was his, one of the close allies, but he's a hero in Armenia. So can you justify this? I think that the ideology is justifying this approach, unfortunately. And then this is the, just the continuation of the same ideology. And, I, I, and unfortunately, this ideology is not constructive. Armenia, as a Republic of Armenia, as of today, they have not contributed to any regional project. They haven't been constructive to any way. They have territorial claims to two countries, to, to its neighbors out of four. They are, I believe they have another claim to even Georgia on the t some territorial issues. They do it uh, against Turkey, against Georgia so and Azerbaijan. If Armenia wants to live in peace, you have to reconsider it is ideology. You cannot try to uh, convince neighbors to like you if you openly hate them. And this is when you, and the hatred has no end. This ends up with disillusion. That's what's happening today. They already it? did so many mistakes, and I guess it's a time for them to understand which path is the best for them and for their country, for uh, their population. Uh, from that perspective, I think Azerbaijani position is very much clear. I mean, the, the relationship shall be based on international law. That's it. Because the history that, you know, their ideology based on the history that they have created for themselves. And they're becoming hostage of their own ideology. This is the issue. I think they have to shift their priorities. Priority should be international law, as anywhere else. Priority in any civil country is a law, law of that country. Priority in international relationship is the UN, UN Charter, and international law. So if you live in your imaginable world, late, sooner or later, you have to face reality. But uh, as, as I said, Azerbaijani position in that terms are, is very, uh, are very much clear. It's about international law. So we are ready, we are not claiming any other territory, as Mr. President reiterated many times. We are not claiming, for example, any piece of the Republic of Armenia. We are claiming what is due to us by international law. And I guess what is also very important, you mentioned previously that there is double standards policy on behalf of the international community. But what is really good for us in this particular case is that within these 10 days, all world, the full international community, were able to understand one main thing, that Azerbaijan is not going to keep silence anymore. We are... We, we really want to get back our territories. We are not, as you mentioned rightly, we are not getting to get the territory of another state, but what is really belongs to us, we are going to return and there is no another option. So there are two possibilities, whether the Armenia and international community will understand and accept this fact or there will be the war. That's how it works. Definitely. The, this or other way, we'll get our territories back. Definitely. Thank you very much, Mr. Ali, for this interesting discussion. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just to remind to our viewers, you watched the special edition and my guest today was uh, Elnur Ali, head of Nizami Ganjavi International Center. See you in the next edition.